I wanted to make a, a video here of uh, what the inside of a church looks like for a lot of people who, a lot of wit Jehovah's Witnesses who haven't been into a Christian church before. Um, especially if you've been born and raised in it, it's kind of scary. So I want to show everybody that it's not scary. Actually, this is the church annex. I'm doing some maintenance work in here. I don't actually attend here, but I know some people who do. Uh, so I'm in here doing some work. And this is a building they built about seven years ago. They built it with voluntary donations. And they use it for the members, for the mostly for the young people, for the kids. They do lots of really cool stuff in here. Uh, I want to show you this kitchen they have. Look this big kitchen. Isn't that neat? And the walls everywhere, they've got these scriptures uh, on the walls they've got classrooms all these are classrooms along here I know I never saw inside a church when I was a Jehovah's Witness I was never in one I got these scriptures on the wall as a witness I was raised as a witness so I'd never been inside of a church before there's all the little hands of the class that learns in here some more and through those doors they have a food pantry where they serve the community and help those in need as the scriptures say that we should do another thing you won't find at a kingdom hall okay I'm going to go upstairs and let you take a look around up there. Okay, here we are upstairs. And let me walk right down here. Take a look in here. Here's one of the classrooms that they have where they partnership with the parents help the kids get off to a good start this is uh, I think this is for uh, preschool kids I think this is for kindergarten or first grade age kids but again it's all biblically focused Christ focused learning and encouragement you train up a child from infancy and it helps them to get a, a strong faith and foundation built and at the Kingdom Hall, they tell you to do that, but they really don't give you the tools to do it. You may have a few articles once in a while in Awake or maybe a Bible storybook. But you don't get the partnering like you get here at a church like this. Where they really, really come together as a church family to help support the kids. But anyway, I just thought that maybe you'd find it interesting if you've never been in a church before to kind of get an idea of what the inside of one kind of looks like. Nothing scary here, really. I know at the Kingdom Hall everything's really sterile and uh, it's not like that here. It's really family friendly, kid friendly. Here's where they have Bible studies in here. They come together, they have uh, through the week, they have different Bible study groups that do, uh, that have studies in here. There's some of their notes, kind of hard to read. 
we'd all have round meetings around the table there and have uh, different studies. Men's groups, women's groups, groups for parents, groups for single moms, single dads. So yeah, this is just really conducive to helping to support children, family, keep uh, everybody together and don't let anybody fall off the wagon or get lost. As so happens at the Kingdom Hall, a lot of people, uh, people don't get took care of like they need to. They just take all the, the labor and the money and send it all to headquarters. Here's another uh, room where they, where they do Bible study. Okay, I'm in the uh, teen room now where they do uh, the room for the teenagers and young adults. And uh, on this wall they've got some pictures of some of the stuff that they've gone and done, relief work, work locally to help people in need, uh, travel to disaster areas. Um, Jehovah's Witnesses aren't the only ones that do that. Other churches do too. And they also have lots and lots of things to interact with the young people and to let them know that they're loved and appreciated and that they're unique as individuals. It's just really, really interesting to see all these pictures. This is all things that the church has sponsored. Here's a food drive, canned, canned foods that they gathered. So anyway, um, we're doing some cleaning in here, so this room's kind of tore apart right now, but they've got pool tables, ping pong. They got couches and stuff. They can come together, do studies. Yeah, they've got their Bibles out here. And... Here, so they can have a board for putting notes. And they also sponsor uh, children overseas. This is the young man that this group is sponsoring from Africa. So, anyway, just a little bit more. I wish they had this kind of support when I was a young person growing up at the Kingdom Hall. Instead, I just had three really, really boring meetings a week that I had to sit through and sit up straight and don't go to the bathroom, and don't make a sound, and don't fall asleep. I did not get any of the support that these kids are getting. Anyway, that's just a quick walk around of this building. Uh, I noticed how most churches, they're individual, they're, they're uh, unique to the local congregation, whatever they want, how they want to spend their money. Uh, Kingdom Halls, to me, now that I'm not a witness anymore, they're almost like a franchise, like McDonald's. Everywhere you go, they all look the same. And you know, all the money goes to the corporation and they just stamp these out. Here, the money stays local and the members decide what they're going to do with their voluntary donations. And this is one of the ways that this congregation chose to use their money. Okay, look here what's in one of these classrooms uh, here. This is about the names of God. And as a Jehovah's Witness, I was always taught that we're the only ones that are making 
Jehovah's name known, the only ones that use that name, the only ones that know that name. The other churches are trying to hide it. They don't use it. But right here, notice it says Jehovah right behind there. And then right down here, Jehovah, over and over again, Jehovah. And in the text over here, it's too small to read uh, with the camera, but it talks about how uh, the name Jehovah uh, came from a 16th century German translator um, using the vowels from Adonai. And then down at the bottom, it actually says that the Tetragrammaton is found in the Holy Scriptures 6,800 times. And I remember telling people that out in field service. Um, but people are learning that here at church. So I thought that you might find that interesting.